On today's show, we're interviewing Benton Crane. Who's Benton Crane? Well, Benton Crane is the CEO and the founder of the viral video marketing company known as Harmon Brothers. This marketing expert has created internet video campaigns like Poopery that have racked up 1.5 billion views. Again, that's 1.5 billion views. He and his team's magical marketing videos have generated $350 million in sales. And on today's show, he shares with you the secret sauce that makes him the boss of online internet marketing videos. Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Cutting Dixon's on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's the C and Z up on your radio, and now three. Two, one, here we go! We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. Yes! 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 Oh, yes! Oh my gosh, so good, so good. So good. We, we've always wanted our episodes to be classy. Classy. And so on today's show, we're Very interviewing classy. a guy who is a marketing wizard. And so I wanted to use megaphone technology to introduce today's guest. Well, that is cutting edge technology. Cutting right edge, Benton, it's cutting edge technology. Benton Crane, welcome on to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? Fantastic. Thanks for having me on. Oh, brother, I am fired up about you. Uh, can you share with the listeners out there who are not familiar with Harmon Brothers? Uh, you, you, what, what is Harmon Brothers and, and what do you do as the CEO of Harmon Brothers? So we are the agency behind many famous campaigns that you've likely seen on the internet, starting with poopery and uh, chat books, purple mattresses, uh, squatty potty, Lumi deodorant, fiber fix, and and the list goes on and on. Uh, so our our clients have have enjoyed, well, I don't know, it's over something like 1.5 billion views on those videos and. And over, I don't know what we're up to, something like $400 million in, uh, in sales uh, to go along with those campaigns. So that, that's what we do. That's what we, who we are. So most people probably aren't familiar with the name Harmon Brothers, but they're likely familiar with uh, you know, many of the companies that, that we've done work for. I have a, uh, a person who's a, a client of mine who uh, walked into the meeting and they said, you have to watch this video. What's a super easy way to tell that your bed is awful? The raw egg test. Let me prove it. And this is a video that you guys produced for the Purple Mattress. And they were watching it over and over and over. And I said, have you bought a Purple Mattress yet? And they go, no, not yet, but I keep watching this video. Now they shared that video with I don't know how many people, I mean, they made me watch the video in the meeting, and then they had my staff watch it, and then they shared it. They shared me a link to it. I mean, they were like obsessed with it. Uh, can you talk about this for a second? Like, how do you go about making a commercial like this uh, purple mattress commercial? How, how do you how do you do it? Yeah, it's it's all based on this idea that the old concept of advertising where I'm going to force advertisements in front of your face, because I know that you're a captive audience and I can show you whatever I want to show you. That's an old notion that is dying. And, and the new notion is that if I make an advertisement, I have to make it so good that you want to watch it, that you're excited to watch it. You're excited to talk about it. You're excited to comment on it. You're excited to share it. And, and so every campaign we ever work on, we always come from that mindset of how do we make this so good that people want to watch it? They're, they're doing it out of, uh, out of you know, their own free will um, because there's no, you know, there's no captive audience anymore. If you see something in your feed and you, it doesn't catch your attention, you can keep scrolling. Right. So ben, and, what, what you're saying is just okay is not okay? <laughs> yeah yep to to, to quote uh, some other famous advertisers yeah no i mean it's fun i mean i i really the day now has when i'm watching tv which i don't do very much but 
it, it amazes me. I love to watch the advertisements because as a business owner, that's something I've always been interested in and fascinated by. What has moved me in an ad? What has made me want to do business with the company? And I find myself now rewinding the TV to rewatch an ad. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, they're getting so clever and so fun out there. And you're right. I mean, our... You know, when you have a, a you DVR shows, you're you're busy, you're you're multitasking, which is you know crazy anyway. While you're trying to watch TV or something, and and they have to be, they have to capture you, and that that's awesome. That yep. that that uh, you understand that, you know that, and you're excelling in that. So so hoorah! I want to I want to yeah, we we go ahead. I want I want to get into your your wisdom on this because you make videos that are viral, but you do it in a mathematically almost scientifically as close to as guaranteed way as possible. You produce videos that touch the amygdala, the almond-sized part of the brain that processes emotions, and in such a way that people are wowed and they feel like they cathartically have to share it now. What is the science behind this? What's the process? Because you are you are at a next level, my man. Yeah, it's it, it, my background is actually in data analytics. You know, I spent the first part of my career as a statistician, uh, at the U.S. Census Bureau, and then I spent some years uh, working in the intelligence community um, out out in Washington D.C. as as an analyst. And so when you know when I joined up with my partners, the Harmon brothers, um, the piece that I brought to the table was this you know this data piece, these analytics that you're referring to. And when you marry the world of creativity with the world of data-driven decisions, it becomes a really, really powerful combination. So let me give you a quick example. Yeah. Uh, that, that purple commercial that, uh, that you, you, know, you just played the, the opening clip of that. What people don't understand is that we also wrote, uh, you know, we scripted and we shot and we edited. I can't remember for certain, but I want to say it was four or five different intros to that same commercial. Because we know that, you know, we have less than five seconds to grab your attention. And if we successfully grab your attention, we're going to be able to hold it. And we're going to not just entertain you, but we're also going to convince you um, that, you know, that in the case of Purple Mattress, that it's an awesome mattress and that it can solve, solve some of your problems. But if we fail to capture your attention, then we're not going to get the opportunity to transmit that message to you. And, and so, you know, when a lot of people who go into video, they just take their best guess and then hope it works out. Whereas we say, okay, let's take our best guess, but then let's make some contingency plans and say, okay, we think it's going to be like this, but let's also try, you know, plan B, plan C, and plan D, and plan E, so that we can actually take those different intros, yep. we can take them to market and test them and find out which intro actually has the highest view through rate so that we know we can drive a high percentage of people from that intro into the rest of the ad. And, and so um, I don't remember the exact numbers on that, that purple ad, but oftentimes, you know, we'll see the difference between a winning intro and a, uh, and a non-winning intro can sometimes be to the tune of like 70% difference between in 83 uh, um, million. Go ahead. You, so you said the numbers. 183 million people so far have seen this purple mattress video that I played. I mean, it is impressive what you're doing. I mean, this is. Oh, that 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 that's just that one variation of it. That that ad actually has several hundred million views behind it. Now it's 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 one of the most successful uh, successful campaigns in the history of mattresses, if not the history of advertising. It's it's pretty incredible. Hey, Bit, Bitten, I'm on YouTube right now, and I, I just as, as a personal side sidebar, yeah, pers personal sidebar, of all the ads, of all the campaigns, of all the stuff you've done, do you have a personal favorite? <laughs> you know, there's one that um, does kind of have a soft spot in my heart, and okay. that's the ad that we did for Fiber Fix. Which Cyber is fix. Okay, a fiberglass repair wrap that is 100 times stronger than duct tape, uh -huh. and and in that ad, we we threw cars off of cliffs to demonstrate That's the cool. the strength of of this That's fiberglass cool. repair wrap, 
And oh my goodness, I think I'm a little bit redneck at heart because <laughs> throwing cars off a cliff, it yeah. like it, it 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 just touched me in a in a deep way. You know? <laughs> I, love I, I want to queue up some of the audio of this real quick. And, I, and all it? the listeners, if you do a Google search or if you go, if you do a YouTube search for Redneck drives a duct taped car off of a cliff. Redneck drives a duct taped car off of a cliff. Here we go. Let me keep the audio. What happens when you flip a car with the roll cage held together by duct tape? Oh, wow. This is actually happening. Wow. Is that the ad he's talking about? I believe so. That was a dummy. That's the one. I'd never get in that car. It's held together by duct tape. But what if you use tape as strong as steel? Manliness. That's super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, real quick, I I'm going to see what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to try to sell you something real quick. I'm going to okay. try to sell you something. All right. Um, Benton, uh, Dr. Z. Uh, currently uh, owns the uh, largest grossing, highest grossing optometry clinic in Oklahoma, or one of the most. I think it's the, the most. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Uh, Thank also, you. Uh, he, he is an owner, a partner with, with a bank uh, yes. where he gets auto unlimited auction, uh, suckers, an auto auction, the largest auto auction in the state. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to make a pitch for, for, to a guy who has the capacity to pay you, and he, he loves crazy commercials. I'm not kidding. Oh, yeah. This is the guy who's him. had the most aggressive billboards I've ever seen. Z, I think you're going to become a customer of this guy. What does it cost <laughs> to hire your services, and what kind of um, market value creation could he maybe expect to create if he runs if he makes an Internet ad that is hot? Hot. Tell us more. Sure. So let, let me start with the second part of that question, then I'll go back to the first part of it. So – um, you know, I think the best thing I can do is give you a few examples. So Poopery, for instance, they, they were doing about $7 million per year prior to, you know, our partnership with them. And, and the very next year, I believe they hit somewhere in the mid $20 million range. Woo! Um, Squatty Potty was about $4 million per year. We jumped them up to 20 the first year, and then I think they hit 30 the second year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, purple, we took them from zero. They hadn't launched yet. Um, so we, we launched, uh, the, the brand and the, and the campaign. And, and I think with, it was about 14 months is what it took to hit a hundred million dollars, uh, so, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, Lumi so is a more recent one. They jumped from about $1.5 million per year up to 15. And now they're on track, uh, for 30 million. Dude, that's um, hot. So the, yeah, th those are those are kind of some some examples of, uh, you know, the power of when you combine great marketing with great products, the uh, the the results are just remarkable. I mean, you, you you pretty much become unstoppable. When you were, let's say Z wanted to hire you for the auto auction, what's the process look like? You know, if he, if he were to engage with you, what does that process look like, and how much money is he looking at spending? Yeah, good, great question. So kind of the, the first thing that, that we look at is can we get passionate behind this product or, or service? Um, do, do we use it? Do we love it? Do we tell our friends about it? Do we tell oh, our yeah. families about it? Because it, that's, that's usually an indicator that, one, it's a really awesome product, and, and two, it's an indicator that because we're so passionate about it, that passion is going to come out in, um, in, in, in our ads. Um, and, and so, you know, speaking right off, right off the bat about an auto auction, I don't have any experience with auto auctions. And so I don't know what level of passion um, I would get behind it. But that, that's the first question I would ask myself. Okay, let me use it. Let me experience it. Let me, let me see what the benefits are of it so that I can get excited about it. And once I get excited about it, then I know I have a really high probability of success when I go into making, you know, campaigns for it. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, go ahead. I'm going to assume that you, I'm just trying to really make this sale happen. See, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a power broker here. Yeah. I'm assuming yep. that you're going to be passionate. And I'm going to assume, Z, you're passionate about his passion. There's I'm like passionate a, about, a, a I'm passionate passionate about his passion supernova. right now. About, I'm passionate about What it. happens next, Benton? So uh, next, um, uh, you know, uh, assuming that, uh, you know, we're, we're able to put together the right package 
the, that the business needs at the right time and yep. it's, you know, w- within your, your price range. And that can start, you know, we, we have entry level packages that, that start, you know, around the, the 30 K range. Um, and obviously that, that won't buy you ads where you're throwing cars off of cliffs or, or anything close to it, oh, but yeah. it, 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 it acts, it acts as a starting point for a business who is young, they're, they're a startup, but they need those sales so that they can kind of grow to the next level. And then our packages run from there, you know, all the way up into, um, it, you know, some of our, our better known stuff where we get really crazy, like the cars flying off the cliff, that type of thing. Uh, sometimes those can, can run, you know, in the neighborhood of like $500,000. Um, and, and, then, and then there's a range of, of offerings kind of in between there as well. But, but think about this, though. Come buy your car at Z sixty six Auto Auction, and then use Super Power Tape, so you can if you drive off a cliff, <laughs> your car will still be in great shape. I mean, think about it. I think we've got something here, Ben. I think I think there's idea. a little traction here, maybe a slight to moderate baby traction. Think I mean, think about that. <laughs> so you <laughs> love you love advertising, and this guy I loves, love it. I, I love it. I you love, love it, and I love people. That love it and do it well. I really do. There's nothing worse than watching TV oh, yeah. and seeing a bad ad. There's, oh, no, there's nothing in my mind. But, but that's just the way I think. I, I look at it and I go, not only was that a waste of money, but now I don't want to do business with your company because that ad was so bad. I mean, you see that, yeah, right, it, Ben? It, I mean, it's crazy. It kind of, yeah, it kind of leaves you feeling disrespected, right? You're right. Like, like really? <laughs> really? Do, do you value my time that little that you would put that crappy ad in front of me? <laughs> hey, I, by the way, have you guys done a Super Bowl ad? You know, we haven't done a Super Bowl ad yet. So that's, that's kind of your next thing that, that we would that, love the opportunity to do. Yeah, is that a, that's got to be a bucket list item, right? I mean, come on. That's got to be. Yeah, yeah, we, we would love that. I, I, I feel like. Our our team is a world class team, and and we could really knock people's socks off. And oh, so it yeah. would be fun to yeah. you know to get to get an audience the size of the Super Bowl. That'd be a neat experience. Yeah, those are, it's always fun. I mean, I like watching this. I love Super Bowls. Usually they're blowouts, and the games aren't always that great. But the ads are like the best of the best of the best. And I and I love that being a businessman and an advertiser and and respecting the that process. You know, you see them and you go. Uh, but your stuff, uh, I mean, with the way you're going, I mean, you'll you'll. It's kind of like uh, you're kind of like the Patriots. I mean, you'll 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 get there one of these days, right? We're we're, uh, we're banking on it. Yeah, there you go. Now, Benton, um, I want to ask you, how did you first start uh, your your company, and what kind of camera gear were you using when you first started? For the listeners out there who oh, he's all maybe now. are are startup, uh, maybe they're videographers listening. There's people out there that own a video company. And they're wanting to know what is what kind of gear do I need in terms of video and audio to really get in a professional conversation? Maybe not to be the quality you guys have, but what kind of gear did you start with? So is, that, that's a really interesting question. I think it's important to acknowledge that, that there's a spectrum of, or, or maybe we should think of it as a timeline from, you know, we start out, everyone starts out as an obscure startup that nobody's heard of. Cash is, is um, scarce um, and, and we have to be ultra, ultra scrappy. And then there's this spectrum all the way from that obscure startup all the way to, you know, let's say Nike or Apple where you, you now have, you know, like a billion dollar marketing budget each year. And, and so you can always go with the best of the best. Right. Right. And, and even for, you know, newer companies, there still is a spectrum between that brand new startup and, um, and, you know, purple mattress who can afford to, you know, to hire us to make a $500,000 commercial and, and the range between there totally dictates what kind of, what kind of equipment you're going to use. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that even for a startup, it doesn't matter if you're limited to just an iPhone um, or just a DSLR camera or something like that. As long as you get your messaging right, you know, if you're combining a, a compelling message with a, you know, with a compelling product or service, you're going to be able to drive those initial results so that then you can graduate up to you know, a, a cinematic camera and cinematic lenses and, um, and, and cinematic lighting so that you can really start to get beautiful and professional. But nobody has to start there. And, and quite frankly, no one should start there, right? It, it's, going, it's likely going to be a waste of money if, 
you know, it, if your company is still young and, and, and scrapping, you know, to keep the lights on and, and to keep payroll paid and, and that sort of thing. So to answer your question, um, messaging and product are both way more important than the actual gear behind it. Got it. Um, so use what, use whatever you have access to. And then as your, as your resources grow, your equipment will get more sophisticated and, um, and, and stuff will become prettier and more professional and higher budget. And, and that's the natural progression that everyone goes through. And that's okay. Now, one of our uh, longtime listeners, uh, Charles Kola, he owns a gym called Kola fitness.com Kola fitness.com that he and his wife, Amber, uh, started again, Kolafitness.com. I know he has a question for you in just a minute, but before I let Charles ask you a question, I want to know if you're going to make a disaster soup, uh, or a, a, a disaster soup, if you're going to make a, a, a chaos casserole, if you're going to make a absolutely, uh, if you're going to make an abomination of an advertisement, what are the keys? What are the key in core, uh, the core <laughs> ingredients to making an ad that costs a lot of money and that doesn't work? An ad that nobody clicks on, an ad that is not compelling. Like I can't, be- I don't, I don't believe that people set out Z and they say, "We know what we're going to do. What? We're going to make an ad that is terrible." Uh, yeah, no. I'll so what are the what are off. the keys? What are the core ingredients of making a bad advertisement that compels nobody to take action? So, I think one major piece of that disaster casserole would be to make something that is surprising but not fitting. What I mean by that oh, yeah. is so oftentimes, you know, people see our ads and they're like, whoa, you know, this is hilarious, or they're throwing cars off the cliff. They're doing these things to capture my attention and suck me in. But the very next thing that happens after we capture your attention is we deliver a message that's very appropriate to whatever we use to, to capture your attention. So it feels very cohesive. And, and the opposite of that, and you, you can find lots of examples of this, where people will use shock and awe to try to grab your attention, but then once they have your attention, then all of a sudden they shift gears in a major way, and they're like, okay, we got your attention now. Now let's talk about this other thing. And, and it leaves the viewer not only feeling disjointed, like they're confused about what they're watching, but the confused customer never buys. Like that, that is a that's just a core tenant of advertising and marketing. The confused customer will never purchase. And so when you create that confusion, it, it just doesn't work. So an example of that, I remember there was a Super Bowl commercial um, in the early 2000s. Um, what was the company? I think the company is now defunct. It, it was like <laughs> outpost.com or something. Yeah. And, and the commercial is basically there's this marching band out on the football field um, and they're, they're marching and playing. And then the narrator says something like, to capture your attention, we released a pack of ravenous wolves. And all of a sudden, all these wolves run out and they're attacking this band. And, and as you're huh. watching it, you're like, what is going on? You know, I remember that commercial. I really do. Yeah. Oh. But then the commercial ends and you're like, what was what did I just see? I like I have no idea what outpost.com yeah. com is. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and and it just it's disjointed. So it's it's an expensive way to not drive results. <laughs> yeah, amen to that. Woo. Now talk about the call to action. Um, some people have a commercial at the end. You go, what am I supposed to do? What what? Well, I mean, happened? I just okay. I'm wowed. It's I like, saw wolves attack band members. Or what yes. do you even do? Yeah, I, I see these commercials all the time, and they're always they're always aired by nonprofits. Or it's a commercial, and at the end of it, it goes, a message brought to you by the good folks at the... And you're like, what, what? was this for? What, what, what am why? I supposed to do as a result why? of this? Why did you it have that sappy man with the sappy voice life. talk to me about that? Talk to me about the call to action. Where do people get that wrong by default? Okay, so historically, you have two camps, right? You have your direct response world, which is like your infomercials. And in that camp... People love calls to action. They're all about it, right? Oh, you know, yeah. It drives oh, yeah. the results. And, but in the, then you have this other camp, which historically has been kind of your traditional branding camp. Think of your Nike, Apple, Coca-Cola. You know, it's this higher-end uh, type stuff. And that world hates calls to action. They're like, oh, that's so gross. I'm not going to be pushy. 
I'm not going to, right. um, it, you know, I, I don't want my customers to feel like they have to go take a shower after they, after they watch my commercial, <laughs> which <laughs> in that world, that's how they look at infomercials, right? They're like, ooh, gross. That's sticky. <laughs> And, and those two worlds hate each other. They'll both like trash oh, yeah. on each other oh, yeah. and, and criticize each other to no end. But we believe that both have value. And if you take the best of both worlds, you, you end up go. with this really amazing combination where you're driving the immediate results that, you know, the direct response guys want to see, but you're also making it memorable and fun and emotional and, and you're building a brand and you're lodging yourself in your customers' memories in such a positive way. And that's what the traditional branders are all about, right? And so we try to sandwich that all together. And that's why we're bringing in things like humor and brand character yep. and brand universe. Yeah. But then, but to your point, we're combining it with, yeah, we're going to do a call to action. We're going to invite you to click oh, yeah. to learn more. or We're going to invite you to click to, to make a purchase. And we're going to take the time to overcome your concerns and and build credibility so that we can really drive those business results and create a long lasting brand at the same time. Um, because, you know, let's face it, m not many companies have the luxury of a Nike or a Coca-Cola where they can just, you know, shower the world with brand messages and and have it work. Most companies would just run out of time and run out of budget and go out of business. And so most like companies outpost. have to drive the drive right, those right. immediate results, and that's what the call to action is all about. Right. I I want a commercial that I hate. How much I love it. Oh wow, that's what I want. That's a new. Kind that's of hate. A, that's a new, that's a new. <laughs> I mean, I want a commercial that I'm watching TV in hopes that I get to see it because it's going to sear into your neural I mean, pathways a memory that you can never. Get I want to put it on a YouTube loop. I want to. I want to not only see it on the TV. You want an earworm of a video. I I want to play <laughs> it as I'm sleeping and just have it just waft over me, and and hate how much I love it. That's that's what I oh want. Oh my gosh! I mean, it I, sounds I wanna, like you want to have a, a passionate relationship that ends badly. Well, or <laughs> or a great relationship that ends passionately. No, oh, wait. Oh, I don't. Wait. I don't. If I'm confused. I'm speaking, confused. Speaking I'm of actually that, confused let, 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 right now. Let's go to Charles Koloff in the booth. Uh, Charles Koloff, founder <laughs> of uh, Koloff Fitness. Sir, what question do you have here for Mr. Benton Crane, the viral marketing expert who has racked up 1.5 billion views with his videos and $350 million in sales? Oh, yeah. What question do you have? Super Benton. Hey, I've got a question. We have uh, fitness centers in three different states and soon to be four um, and we are, we've currently just shot a video and, uh, everything you're saying is like connecting with my brain a ton because I've just went through some of that process. And of course you're, you're doing it at next level, but, um, you talked about that first five seconds connecting and then making sure that you have a great shift where you actually talk about your product and service so that they don't have a bad taste in their mouth. But the big thing mm -hmm. that you said was per the biggest thing was we, we played with certain ads and trying to change that first five seconds. We're, we're a low cost gym which is kind of like a planet fitness. If they're like McDonald's, mm -hmm. we're like the Chick-fil-A, just a di different culture and um, a, a great clean value, um, but for a great dollar amount. So it's a lower cost model. And what I was going to say in the first five seconds uh, of the, our videos, we've got some of those actually on our landing page. You might look at it at some point, but what, what kind of thing um, in the first five seconds for like a consumer that's twenties, thirties and forties, like our ideal and likely buyer, what would you like recommend for that group that's interested in fitness? What's a great thing that you could pop in your mind that would be a great to click on or something like that? Pictures of me, probably pictures of me. Yeah, great question. Um, as far as like those immediate attention grabs or or hooks, um, it, you know that those are those are things that you kind of develop over um, uh, over a lot of time and brainstorming and experimentation. Um, and so, so it'd be tricky for me to give you one right off the top of my head. But one thing I could tell you that, that would really resonate with your advertising efforts and with your audience is that whoever you have in those ads, I don't know if it's yourself um, or, or, or your wife, but whoever is, is kind of the spokesperson for the brand, who, whoever is, is doing the talking, um, you want to really make sure that that person is connecting on two different levels and the two different levels that you're looking for are one is empathy, meaning, Hey, I've been where you're at. 
I understand what you're I going do. through. I get it. I've yep. felt the pain that, that you're feeling. Um, and if you can really connect on that empathetic level, that's like challenge number one. And then challenge number two is you, you take them from that place of empathy to now you go into this place of authority of, yes, I've been where you're at, but guess what? I've come out successful. Yeah. Let me show you how so that I can be your guide. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and man, if, if you can focus in on empathy and authority, then then you'll end up really resonating with with your audience in a way that, that really connects them to you and the brand. I love awesome. that. Sweet. Awesome. Hot take. Hot take. Ooh, ben, ooh. I appreciate your time so much, and I want to make sure we give you an opportunity if you have, uh, I guess if you uh, you have the, the the time and the uh, the mic time, but so before you drop the mic here, what is the ask that you want our listeners to uh, do? Do you want them to check out your your website, or do you want them to check out a specific kind of video? Um, what is the action step that you would ask of our of our listeners? You know, it it, it depends on on the position that, that the listener finds themselves in. You know, if if, if you're looking for world-class, you know, video marketing to take your business to the next level, then, you know, just come check out HarmanBrothers.com and you can see our portfolio of work and, um, and, and just drop us, a, drop us a line there on the website if you want to chat and we can explore it. Or if you find yourself in a position where you're more of a DIY, uh, where you, where you want to do it yourself, or, or maybe you're, you're looking to, to do video marketing for, for clients, then check out HarmanBrothersUniversity.com, and that's where that's where we train our students to market in the way that we market. Um, it all starts it, it starts first with the script because every script has to has to sell. It has to do a fantastic job of selling. And once you achieve that, then you can start to add on additional layers like humor, like branding, um, like brand character, brand universe. That can all come later, but it all starts with with that script so you know we offer a 14-day script writing challenge where you can go through with our you know with our writers and experience what it's like to write a script that sells and that drives uh drives business for you no matter what stage your business is at you've got so, great uh, great materials up there by the way i mean people can hear um interviews where you guys have actually sat and uh, sat down with the founder of, of fubu damon john and other household names people are going to know I mean, it's 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 great. It's world class stuff. Uh, apparently, you've been investing some uh, some, t- some time in these interviews. I mean, these are great. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yep, that's our podcast from poop to gold. Um, you can check it out anywhere anywhere you listen to podcasts, um, and 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 that's where we dive into you know these great stories of entrepreneurs and businesses who have overcome enormous things to to come out successful, and and we get a chance to dive into those stories of of you know challenge and and success that comes after well thank you for overcoming the adversity of being uh, stuck with us on our on, on the show today i appreciate you overcoming that and for agreeing to to be on the show and i really do um hope that all the listeners out there check out harmanbrothers.com that's harman brothers h-a-r-m-o-n brothers.com harmanbrothers.com check out the website Learn more there, and, and again, we, we appreciate your time, and I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. Pleasure being here. And, and Benton, uh, just out of curiosity, do you sleep on a purple mattress? Oh, oh. <laughs> I sure do. Every I, night. I, I mean, I was watching the ad. I mean, that's impressive. I mean, I'm going to go home right now, and I'm going to get some eggs out, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know what? I'm going to sort this out right now. I can't stand it. I'm headed home right now, going to get four eggs, and this thing's on like Donkey Kong. I mean. Oh, yeah. Do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And if I ruin my mattress, the good thing is I can order a purple mattress online, and it'll be uh, be there pretty soon. So, there you go. There you go. And now, without any further ado, three, two, one, boom. Stop what you're doing and think about this for a second. What would happen if your company was suddenly able to generate exponentially more? quality sales leads that would be incredible what would happen 
if your company came up at the top or near the top of the Google search engine results. Well, I would just feel overwhelmed with all that business. How many thousands of dollars in lost sales or millions of dollars in lost sales are you missing out on simply because your potential customers can't find you when they go online to search for the products and services that you offer? I refuse to think that thought because I don't want any more business. Unless you are a dirty communist that hates money, my new book, Search Engine Domination, will help you grow your business. In my new book, Search Engine Domination, we will teach you the specific steps that you need to take to dominate the search engine results. What do you mean by dominate? You see, in my new book, Search Engine Domination, we will teach you the specific steps that you need to take to dominate search engine results. Download your free ebook copy today at thebestseobook.com. I repeat, that's thebestseobook.com. My name is Amy Baltimore, and I am a CPA in Covington, Tennessee. I've been working with the Thrive team now for about a year. Uh, one of the first things that they did was to update my website and my search engine optimization. I prior had a website, but I was not being found on Google, and all of my new business was coming through referrals uh, from friends, family, etc. And right away, I started to see results. Uh, people were calling and coming in saying that they found me on Google. They just Googled CPA near me, and there I was at the top of the page. And so, um, it's been a great help to my business. Again, you can download your free ebook copy today at thebestseobook.com. Hey, this is Dustin Huff. I'm with Keystone Harbor Marina. Um, we joined Thrive uh, back in January and uh, have been working with these guys for about seven months. Uh, during that time period, we have uh, moved up our Google rank through reviews and SEO processes that we've uh, uh, compiled through these guys. Our leads have gone from about four a week to now 165 a week. So the process works. Uh, I will tell you from experience, once you begin, you have to stay with it. As long as you continually do this week in and week out, month in and month out, you'll continually grow. The system works, but nothing works unless you do. You've got to take some action. Download the ebook for free today at thebestseobook.com. Hello, my name is Daniel with Daniel's Heating and Air here in Amarillo, Texas. Uh, the way Google has affected my business, uh, we have got a lot of calls from Google. Right now it's July and we've had the best month ever. And it took us about eight to 10 months to get on top of Google and I'm glad we did. Remember, nothing works unless you do. You have to go to thebestseobook.com today. Download the ebook for free. Just, just download that ebook for free and you'll be off to the races. Hi, my name is Christina Nemus. I'm the owner and operator of Angel's Touch Auto Body and Detailing in Bourne, Massachusetts. Um, we have been working with Thrive and their coaching for say eight to nine months. And it took us about six months, five to six months to get on the top of Google. Um, and with their help with the website and marketing um, and the SEO and retargeting um, ads with Google and it has been phenomenal we just have light and day business coming in phone calls coming in uh, walk-ins uh, referrals it's just through the roof um, and we couldn't be happier at the moment we are up 50% this year from the previous year and not only is that part of our own hard work and diligence but also with the help of Thrive and what they've done for us and getting us on the top of Google and you know all their knowledge and coaching um, and yeah so super grateful super pumped to see what the future holds for all of us thank you this is your year to thrive Success you will find Today is your day And now is your time Lazy hands make for poverty But diligent hands bring wealth Proverbs 10.4 I'm here to tell you You can do it if you can just motivate yourself To what the masses had to cut off a few So on the day we you and I could rendezvous A misshapen tree that I had to prune I had to make cuts to be here daily at noon So like a tidal wave of knowledge monsoon I could rain on the parades of those who doubt in you Are you the next Rockefeller or the next guru Or the next Dr. King who's 
changing the rules uh, Balls are in your way, will you run right through? Like a running back, cause the one it's up to you I remember my days back in, in the, the dorm room Tuned to the gloom like the temple of doom Overwhelmed with the doubts that try to consume My hope for the future that I could pursue But from the mountaintop now I can conclude That you have what it takes if you want this the view to This is your year to thrive Success you will find Today is your day And now is your time It's your year to thrive Success you will find Today is your day And now is your time This moment is profound Cause you're above the ground Your road might have been rough But what you got now is now We're here to pick you up And to even show you how But you gotta be resourceful With that old pow pow Started from the bottom my way up, cause by 4 a.m. I've always been prayed up. Rise and grind, now's your time, don't dare that up. You gotta get it, don't quit it till you see it grow up. It's your year to thrive. Come on, come on. Success you will find. Yes, yes. Today is your day. Say. And now is your time. It's your time. It's your year to thrive. Come on, come on. Success you will find. Today is your day. And now is your time. It's your time. Yeah, yeah, we all yeah. have a wish and we all want to win. But we cannot begin without self-discipline. If you fall on your face, get yourself up again. Attach yourself to goals, not fail with the friends. When the storm's getting rough and they're scattered and leave, you only be there with yourself and what you believe. We believe in you, but not as much as God does. If you're going through hell, he's got nothing but love. Apply what you learn, increase what you earn, and in due time. You got money, money to burn. burn. Apply what you've learned. Increase what you've earned. And in due time, you got money to burn. Sing it. Apply what you've learned. Uh. Increase what you've earned. In due time, you got money to burn. Sing it. Apply what you've learned. Sing it. Increase what you've earned. Yes. In due time, you got money to money With to burn. With this biblical burn. miracle, yeah. I look to shout down the doubters. Kill the weeds that be killing your dream flowers. Oh. Empower oh. you to d d devour all the obstacles that make your sweet dreams sour. As for me, I used to st st stutter. But now I'm on the microphone smooth like butter If I can do it, I know you can too But you must stick to it like postage do And while Merton's on the chorus singing what he sings I encourage you to dream big dreams Today is your day Today's your day And now is your time It's your time This is your year to thrive Sing it, sing it Success you will find Today is your day it's your day. And now is your time. It's your time. Today is your day. Come on. And now is your time. Sing it, Martin. Today is your day. Now is your time. I realize I can't sing like that, but I can talk and play the woodblock. Okay. If you guys need me, I'll just be over here.